Let's get started. We're going to get started in a seated position. Um, you can start cross-legged or on your knees. I'm going to sit cross-legged. So you can have whichever foot you want in front or on top, whatever works for you. Sitting up nice and tall, your shoulders are stacked over your hips. And just taking this moment to really settle into your body and into the space that you created for yourself. I hope um, everyone is off to a great start this morning and you're feeling good and feeling ready to move and get energized for your day. Alrighty. So just taking this next few minutes to tune into your breath, getting connected. Breathing in through the nose and exhale through the nose. In through the nose and out through the nose. Good. And you can even close your eyes, kind of moving inwards, taking a scan of your body, noticing how it's feeling. Noticing if you're holding any tension anywhere. And if you are holding any tension or feeling a little bit um, of discomfort, you can, as you inhale, um, breathing through the nose. And then as you exhale, send your breath to those air vents, allowing the body to soften and to just let go of any kind of stale, negative energy that you might be holding and anything that no longer serves your body. So the tension no longer serves our body. For the next hour, kind of noticing how our breath can fuel our body, can untie the knots. And it'll help us anywhere that we get stuck along the way. If you like to set an intention for your practice, you can do so now. It can be as simple as one word or a phrase that you live by or want to follow. Something of value and something that really means a lot to you in this moment. And again, taking a few more deep breaths here. Really bringing awareness to what it feels like to be in your body in this space. So we can move together in a present and in a compassionate, non judgmental way. One more deep breath in through the nose and exhale out through the mouth. One more in through the nose and exhale through the mouth, letting it all go. Beautiful. Inhale, reach the arms up overhead. Bring the palms together. Exhale, hands come down to the heart center. Two more inhale, arms up. And exhale, hands up. Center. Last one, inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, hands are heart center. Bring the fingertips down onto the floor. If you're sitting onto your knees, you might want to come on your sitting bones. And with the right hand on the side of the head, leaning over towards the right, stretching out the left side of the neck. Your left fingertips can walk out further towards the side. Allow both shoulders just to soften. And then walking those fingertips back in, release the top arm, switching sides, tilt your head over towards the left. 
And then you walk with us the right fingertips down. Taking those fingertips back in, release the arms. And then inhale, sweep the arms up overhead. And then once your arms get to the top, flip the palms towards the front. Then you're gonna hook the thumbs together and then pull your arms apart. So you're pulling the arms apart, thumbs are together, and then relax the shoulders. Okay, for three, for two, and for one, release, bring the arms down. And then reach the arms back up. Opposite thumb is in front now. And pull the shoulders down. And then pull the arms apart. Good. So this works our shoulders, opening up the front of the body, relaxing the body as we go. Excellent. Release the arms down. Bringing the hands in front of us, coming up onto our knees, and then bringing our sitting bones onto our heels. If this is uncomfortable, you can always place a blanket or something underneath, even on your knees, or you can sit uh, cross-legged if, if that works better. And you inhale, reach the arms up overhead, interlace the hands, and then flip them up to the ceiling. From here, you're going to guide your hands in line with your chest, rounding the upper back, chin comes in towards your chest. And then as you inhale, reach the arms up, looking up, arching through the back. It's just a form of cow and cow. Breathing, exhale, hands in line with your chest, rounding the back. Press the hands away from you. But inhale, reach up, looking up, arching through the back. And then exhale, hands come back in line with your chest. Inhale, arch. And exhale, round. One more inhale, arch, looking up. Beautiful, and coming back to a neutral spine. So releasing the arms now. For this next pose, you're going to interlace your hands about behind the back, and you're going to bring both arms towards your left side to start. So both hands are on the side. If this doesn't work, you can always grab a strap or a towel and bring it to one side. So clasping the hands and clasping the towels, we're bringing the shoulders together. So our elbows are trying to almost come close together. It's a great shoulder, shoulder stretch. And just allowing the shoulders to drop. And then bringing the hands towards the opposite side. And then very slowly release. Bring the palms in front of you. Flip the hands, so stretching out the backs of the wrists. Further you walk your hands, the more of a stretch you'll feel. Or even if you feel a stretch here, that's great too. And then gently flipping the palms. So back to the hands down. Maybe just slight pressure on the side, a little bit less than the other way. And then coming up into all fours into our table top position. So shoulders are directly over top of our wrists, hips are over top of our knees. And you're going to extend the right leg towards the back, toes stay on the floor, and we're going to shift forward and back, kind of warming up our hamstrings, calves, and rocking back and forth. And moving at your own pace. You can stay a little bit longer in the spot that. Maybe you feel that you need a little bit more of. Awesome. And then the shoulders are kind of moving forward and back to over top of the wrists and then coming back. So just noticing how that feels too. You might have to adjust your hands. 
and then coming back to a neutral, a neutral stance, and then lifting that right leg off the floor, drawing the knee towards the forehead, hold it in for three, for two, and for one, extend that leg towards the back, and one more time towards the forehead, this time for five, four, three, two, and one, send it back, and you're going to bend the knee, you can point the toes up or you can drop the foot flex. Then you're going to transfer the weight into your right hand, reach the left arm forward. If this is enough for you, you can stay here. Or if you want to bring that left hand around, grabbing that right foot and kicking into the, to the left hand, opening up the left shoulder. You can look towards the left, you can look down to the mat, or straight in front. For three, lifting the knee up a little bit higher, kicking into that hand. For two, and for one, release the left hand down. Extend the leg towards the back. And then draw that knee towards the forehead again for five. Four, three, two, one. Send it back. And lower down. Awesome. Send the hips back for a quick break into child pose. Taking one full deep breath in through the nose. And exhale through the nose. On your next inhale, shift the weight forward. Left toes reach towards the back. And again, we're shifting forward and back. Kind of saying hello to our hamstring and calf. This is also great for the toes and the foot as well. So we're really working through the feet, working through the back of the leg. And then when you're ready, just coming back to center, lifting that left leg up parallel towards the floor, drawing the knee in towards the forehead for three, for two, and for one, send it back. And this time towards the forehead again, five, four, three, two, one, send it back. Bend that left knee. You can stay here or reach that right arm forward, bringing your right hand around towards your left foot and opening up the right shoulder. Also really grounding down in that left hand and right and right knee for balance and support. And then releasing that right hand down. Extend that left leg back and draw the knee in towards your forehead for five, four, three, two, one. Send it all the way back. And lower the knee down, shift the weight back and towards your heels, coming up onto the fingertips. So giving our rest a little bit for our wrist, a little bit of a break. And maybe shifting the weight from side to side. And when you're ready, looking forward, shift the weight back to neutral tabletop, tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back. Coming into your first downward facing dog, walking out the heels, walking out the feet, swaying your hips from side to side. Your feet can be about hip width apart, or they can be about one fist width apart. So whatever kind of feels comfortable for you. I like um, about hip width apart. That feels good for me and my body this morning. And again, just taking the time to warm up the back of the legs, the entire back body. Allowing your head to be soft, to completely relax. And your gaze is looking at, the, at whatever is behind you through your legs. And then when you're ready, kind of lower those heels down or try to bring those heels down towards the floor. If they don't touch, that's perfectly fine. And then taking one more deep breath. And then looking forward at the top of the mat, bending your knees and walk or hop forward to the top of the mat. Place the hands on the shins, looking halfway up into a flat back. Exhale, hold, bring the hands back down. And then nice and slow, vertebrae by vertebrae, you bend the knees, 
bringing the body up nice and slow. Your head is the very last thing. Rolling the shoulders back and then turning the palms towards the front. Thumbs are out towards the side. Big toes together, heels slightly apart. Coming into our Tadasana Mountain Pose. Squeezing the shoulder blades together, engaging the core. Send the belly button back towards the spine. Your head is an extension of your spine always. So we're growing taller, reaching through to the crown of the head. And then rooting our feet down into the floor. So we're rooted in opposition. Our body's being pulled in two separate directions. Allowing us to grow longer and taller. And feel that sense of spaciousness through the spine and through the entire body. Beautiful. Taking a big inhale, reach the arms up overhead. Then exhale, swan dive forward. You can bend your knees, folding on your hips. Bringing the palms down on the blocks or on the floor. Inhale, looking up halfway. Exhale, fold. Plant your hands down, bend your knees as much as you need to, and step or hop back to a high plank position. Good. You can drop the knees down onto the floor for your first vinyasa, or you want to, if you want to take that version, you can. But if not, we're shifting the weight forward, bending the elbows lower down, chaturanga. Inhale to upward facing dog or cobra. And exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog, holding for five deep breaths. You can always add movement where you feel necessary. So if you want to just walk up the heels again, and then move the legs, and then taking whatever works for you. And if you're finding that your wrists are hurting and down and facing dog, you can always bring your hands on fists, but just be mindful of the wrists again. Or bring the weight of the hands, not into the heels of the hands, not in the wrists, but into the fingers as well. So we're pushing the ground away, lifting up through the shoulders. So right now, there's no pressure on my wrists. All the pressure is lifted up and out. So the higher I lift my hips, the more I push the ground away, the less I'll feel on the hands. Beautiful. Looking forward to the top of the mat. Bend your knees, step or hop forward. Inhale, looking up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, root to rise. Bring the arms up. And exhale, hands to your heart center. Beautiful. At the top of your mat, I'm just going to step a little bit back because there's a light here and I keep hitting it. So inhale, reach the arms up overhead. From here, exhale, side bend towards the right. So our index finger is pointing up. Inhale through center and exhale towards the left. Inhale through center, taking a gentle back bend, lifting through the heart and chest, opening up through the front of the body. And exhale, come back to center. One more time, inhale towards the right. Come up through center and over towards the left. Back through center. Inhale, open up, reaching the fingertips back. And coming back to center. Beautiful. So you can release the arms. We're going to take that variation when we get into our lunges. So just remember right, left, back. We're good. Already big toes together, heels slightly apart. Tadasana, palms facing front. Inhale, reach the arms up overhead. And exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale, looking up halfway. And exhale, fold, plant the hands down. Just step the left leg back into your low lunge position. Dropping the knee, the back knee down. Inhale, reach the arms up overhead. Interlace the hands, index finger pointing up. So we want to draw that left hip down, right hip pulls all the way back. And lower the shoulders down as well. So we're going to side bend over towards the right. Engage that core so we're stable. And then inhale through center over towards the left. So we're bending from side to side. 
coming back through center. Inhale, arching through the back. Reach those fingers back. And exhale through center. If you want, you can stay here, or if you want a little bit more of a challenge, lifting up that back leg. Inhale in place and exhale, side bend towards the side. Inhale through center. Exhale, opposite side. Coming out through center. Inhale towards the back. Keeping a back bend. And exhale, come through center, release the hands down towards the floor. You should step your right foot back into your plank. Bend the elbows, lower down chaturanga. Inhale to upward facing dog. And exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Three full deep breaths here. Looking forward at the top of the mat, bending your knees, step or hop forward. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, root to rise. Palms come up. And exhale, hands to the heart center. Awesome. Big toes together, heels tightened apart. Arms come down by the side. Drop the shoulders down. Inhale, sweep the arms up. And exhale, swan back forward. Inhale, looking up halfway. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees. Step the right leg back to side. Lowering the knees down or lowering the back knee down. Inhale, reach the arms up and interlace the hands. Maybe switch the grip of your hands. So if your right thumb was on top, maybe have the left one on top this time. From here, you're going to side bend. So if you did right, left, and back, you can do the same thing, or you can switch, go left, right, and back, whatever you feel comfortable. So if you inhale in place, you're going to exhale over towards one side. Inhale through center, exhale towards the other side. Inhale through center, and exhale towards the back. Beautiful. And center. One more. Inhale in place, and exhale over towards one side. Coming up through center, exhale towards the other side. And back, inhale, reach it back. And up. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, bring that back knee up. One more, over towards the side. Through center, and back, or other side. And up, and now back. And center, release the arms down. And send your left leg back into your plank. Bend the elbows, chaturanga. Inhale to upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Beautiful. For three. For two. And for one. Shift the weight all into your left leg. Reach the right toes up towards the ceiling. Three legged dog. Bend the knee, opening up that hip. Your knee right now is the highest point. Both shoulders are down, square towards the floor. And then extend that right leg up. Coming up onto your left toes. Shifting the weight forward, draw the knee towards your nose. And you're going to step the right foot forward at the top of the mat. Lower the back heel down, reach the arms up, warrior one. Pull that right hip back. You can bring the palms together at the top, or you can again interlace the hands. And again, holding it here for three, for two, and for one. Bring the hands down, coming up on your back toes, lifting that heel, and then send that leg back up into a three legged dog. You bend that knee again. Open up those hips. 
extend the leg, and lower it down beside the left. Shifting your weight into the right leg, lift the left leg up. Bend the knee, open up that hip. And extend your left leg. Come up onto your right toes. Shift the weight forward. Your left foot is coming all the way up in between your hands. If you need to move your leg with your hands, that's fine too. Lower the back heel down. Reach the arms up, warrior one. And so you pull that left hip back. Drive the right hip forward. And we're in a nice, powerful stance here. Might not feel like we're doing very much, but there is so much happening here. We're squaring our hips. We're creating power and strength in our legs by holding this position, pressing into the back edge of the right foot. We're working that inner line. So we're lifting the arch of the foot. We're creating strength in the quads, stretching through the sides of the legs. So much happening. Beautiful hands come back down. Lift that back heel. Left leg comes up and back into your three legged dog. Bend the knee, open the back leg. And extend the left leg and lower it down the side of the right. You're going to look forward and then shift the weight into your high plank. So, starting with the heels, we lift the heels up and then we roll forward, shoulders over the wrists. Let's try that again. So hips up and back, downward facing down. Coming up onto our heels or our toes, and then shift the weight forward over our wrists. Beautiful. Hold for three, for two, and for one. Drop the left knee down, and you're going to turn towards the right side. So bring the right foot down and reach the left, sorry, the right arm up. So we're in a version of side plank here. Option, you can stay here. You can stack the feet together, making sure that our shoulders are in one straight line. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, you can, if that knee is down, you bring the knee up and towards your chest. You can even extend the leg forward. For three, two, and for one. Before drop that knee down, and then send both legs back into your high plank. Switching to the opposite side, right knee comes down. We're opening up the left side of the body. You can take whatever version of side plank you like, maybe stacking the feet, or even bringing that knee up, or sending it forward for three, for two. And for one, lower down. Beautiful. Big toes together, opening up the knees, mat width apart, and send your hips back, coming into a child's pose, bringing the forehead down towards the floor. Taking a few moments of rest if you need to grab some water. And grab some water. And then when you're ready, lifting yourself up onto your hands, bring the knees together, tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back downward facing dog. And we're walking your hands back towards your heels or back towards the feet at the back of the mat. And then bending your knees as much as you need to. Grounding off the elbows, release the weight of the head, and then just swing the body from side to side. So here we're releasing any tension, any strain that we must be holding. Acknowledge your head. Yes. Shake your head. No. Letting it all go. From here, letting your arms just fall down towards the floor. And then with your peace fingers, 
You're going to wrap them around your big toes. And then step. So step your big toes onto the fingers. So we're not just rolling out on the outside edges of the feet. The whole foot is down, but you're stepping onto your fingers. Thumbs can rest on top of the big toes. You're going to open your elbows out towards the side and then bring the body down. So we want the belly kind of connecting towards the side. Awesome. You're just allowing anything to be heavy. Three, two, and four more. Good. Releasing the hands and then sliding the hands underneath our feet. So our toes will kind of hit the wrists. And again, these, this is great for hamstrings, for shoulders, for tension in the head, neck and head. So we're stepping onto our hands, allowing the upper body to just fold. And then eventually with a few deep breaths, see if you can straighten the legs a little bit more. And slowly releasing those hands. And then rolling up nice and slow again. Your head is the last thing to come up. Bring the shoulders up, they're rolling back, and then stepping into the middle of your mat. From here, we're going to shift the weight into your left leg, and then bring the right knee up in towards your chest. You can interlace the hands or grab a strap, pull it up towards your chest. You can either hold on to a wall or a chair for extra support. And then with that right hand, you're going to take that lean towards the side. And try to pull it up towards your shoulder. An option to stay here, you can extend the opposite arm towards the side. Or you can bring it behind your head. Or you can take your peace fingers around your big toe and extend that leg towards the side. as much as you can and you're reaching that opposite arm out for three for two and for one nice and slow bring it back and release the leg down shaking it up and then shifting the weight into the other leg really grounding through that foot feeling all parts of the foot onto the floor especially the toes toes will help us balance Draw the knee up and towards the chest. Left hand will guide your left leg out towards the side. First, make sure that hip is dropped so we're not lifting through the hips, but everything is nice and level. Maybe you're reaching your opposite arm out and staying here, or with your peace fingers on the big toe, extend that left leg out towards the side. Three, for two, and for one. Release, come back to center, shake out the legs. So we did front and side, now we do the back. So shift the weight again into your left leg. You're gonna take your left, sorry, your right foot into your right hand. So you can either grab the outside of the foot or the inside of the foot. So that's up to you. The knees stay together and reach the opposite arm up. So our goal here, we're trying to bring our foot towards our sitting bones. Our knees are in line with one another. We're rooting down into our supporting leg. And an option here, you can stay here, or you can kick into that back, that back hand, coming into dancer's pose. So we're really reaching that leg back. His opposite arm can come forward. You can even tilt the toes forward. And 
and then gently coming back to center, lifting up. Beautiful, and release. Awesome, shaking it out and switching sides. So we're taking the left foot into the left hand, either on the inside or the outside. That's again totally up to your personal preference. Sometimes I like uh, when it's on the inside, it's easier to lift, I find. But again, that changes moment to moment. Reaching the opposite arm up, knees together. And if you're ready, you can kick that leg towards the back and then reaching the opposite arm forward. And then very slow, coming back to center and releasing that leg. Beautiful, coming to the top of the mat and take a big step back with your right leg. So left toes are pointing towards the front, arms out at a T. You're gonna lunge into that front leg, coming into warrior two. Right hand comes behind the back, left arm flips and then reaches up and back, exalted warrior. Very one and 90 degree bend in that front leg. The knee is pushing out towards the pinky edge of the foot. And then bringing our arms back to shoulder height. Then reaching the left fingertips forward, send the right hip back. Coming onto your left forearm, the right arm sweeps down and up with side angle pose. Bringing both arms up to shoulder height. And doing that one more time. So right hand comes behind the back, left arm up and back. Bringing your arms back to a T. And then shifting the left fingertips forward. Arm comes down, right arm up and over. Side angle pose. From here, keep the right hand where it is and reach the left arm up as well. So we're really working the core, we're getting the sides of the body. So three, two, and one. Arms come back to shoulder height. Extend this front leg. So both legs straight and then shift your left fingertips forward and drop that arm down inside of the left leg. And then right arm reaches out for triangle. You can look up at the top arm. Or even option peace fingers around the big toe. Coming back up to center, lunging into that front leg once again for warrior two. And then from here, you're going to lift that front heel. So we're on our toes. You can stay here, kind of feeling that length throughout the front of the left leg. You can even see if you can lift the back heel off the floor. We're kind of in surfer pose. Okay, three, two, and one. Lower both heels down. Cartwheel the hands down towards the floor, coming up onto the right toes. And then you're going to shift the weight forward, stepping both feet at the top of the mat. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, fold. And then nice and slow roll up, nice and slow vertebrae by vertebrae. Head is the last thing to come up. Beautiful. Moving on to the other side, switching sides. Big step back with your left leg. Arms come up to shoulder height. Shifting into our warrior two. So checking for heel to heel or heel to mid arch alignment. Arms are nice and straight. Left hand comes behind the back, right arm up and over. Exalted warrior. So coming back to center, right fingertips reach forward and come down. Then left arm up and over.
Coming back through center, one more time, reach it back. Exalted warrior. And coming forward, hinging up the hips, left arm down and up. Keeping your left arm where it is, extend the right arm up as well. Imagine that we're holding something in between the hands. Beautiful, and then bringing both arms back to shoulder height, straightening that front leg. Good. Send your left hip towards the back, right fingertips forward and down, triangle. You can look up at the top arm. And again, we want a straight line with the chest. So opening up through the chest and through the back body. So imagine that there's a wall behind us. We're pressing the, that top shoulder back into the wall. Beautiful. Lifting up, arms back at shoulder height. Lunging into that front leg once again. Maybe taking your surfer pose, so lifting that front heel. If that's enough, you can stay here, or even lifting the back heel up for itself. Lowering both heels down, circle the arms down towards the floor. And then step the left foot towards the top of the mat, inhale, look halfway up. And exhale, fold. Bring the feet together, knees together. Bending through the knees, sweep the fingertips along the floor, reach the arms up, chair pose. Maybe draw the hands at heart center, your tailbone pointing down, core is engaged, knees are slightly back, so pull the hips back so we can see all 10 toes. We're just holding it here. Maybe feeling it a little bit in the legs. Beautiful. And extending through the legs, straighten the legs, reach the arms up, take a slight back bend, and then hands at heart center. Beautiful. At the top of your mat, we're going to work our way down to more of our yin postures. But before we do that, taking flight into warrior three. So take the right knee up and towards your chest. Hands can stay at the center. And then leading with that heel, send that back towards the back wall or whatever's behind you. And then bringing your chest down forward. As you inhale, bring yourself, bring yourself back up, knee up and towards your chest. And then once again, send that heel back. Warrior three. And one more. Inhale through center. And exhale, warrior three. Beautiful. This time when you bring it forward, extend that right leg front. So full hamstring stretch, lifting the toes up towards the ceiling. Good. And then we're going to kick it up for five, four, three. Two, one, and release. Beautiful, bend the knees and shake it out. Awesome, other side. So shift the weight into your right leg. Knee up and towards your chest. And extend that weight back. Where your toes are pointing down towards the floor, hips are level. Inhale, back up through center, knee up and towards your chest. And then send it back. Beautiful. One more inhale through center. And exhale back. This time as you bring it up through center, extend that heel forward, toes up towards the ceiling. And then kick it up for five, four, three, two, one. And release. Beautiful. Shake it out. And then bringing ourselves down towards the floor nice and gracefully. We're going to come up onto our toes. Hands can stay at the center. And you're going to lower down, bend the knees into a nice yoga squat. The heels will come, or your sitting bones will come close to your heels. Beautiful. From here, take the hands behind and have a seat. 
Feet are about mountain width apart, hands are behind, and just moving the knees, moving the hips from side to side. If you need to grab some water, you can do so. And just windshield washing the legs from side to side. And then coming to center, we're going to cross our right leg over top of our left leg. So we'll form a figure four. So you can draw that foot. That um, the leg that's on the floor in towards you, so if you want more hip stretch. So this is one version of taking a pigeon, or you can take it out um, as far as you would like. So the more you draw it in, the more you want to sit up nice and straight. So we're trying to bring the knee towards the shoulder, foot towards the opposite shoulder. Sorry, same same shoulder, but um, yeah. So we're staying here for a while. We're trying to open up that knee, open up the hip. If I turn towards the side, I'm trying to bring my chest up nice and straight too. So kind of this shin, this bottom half of my leg is coming up towards my chest. Breathing through it, breathing into the left hip or the right hip, whatever leg you have on top. And then very slowly, you're going to straighten and extend that front leg. Your top leg stays exactly where it is. Awesome. And then planting that foot, that cross leg, onto the floor. Inhale your left arm up and hook it outside of your right knee. Twisting towards the back. And you're wringing out the spine, twisting from the base of the spine all the way up to the crown of the head. Beautiful. And then twisting towards the opposite side, just giving a gentle counter twist. And then while you're here, Bend, you're going to turn the toes down towards the floor, bend that bottom leg, and then sit back up if this is possible for you. So you can stay here, you can even just hold over this front leg, or if you want to come into shoelace, you're going to cross both knees on top of one another. So it's great for the hip to give a place of block in between if the knees don't touch, or if that top leg isn't coming down. And you want to pull kind of the feet apart away from each other. So you have nice and tall. This is enough for you to stay here. Or as you exhale, kind of fold forward, bringing the nose down towards the floor in front of you. And a few deep breaths here. Really feeling it through the hips. And next inhale, bring yourself back up. Bring your hands behind, lift the knees up, and uncross your legs back to this neutral position. Again, move the knees from side to side. And then we're going to take the opposite leg on top, so cross the opposite ankle on top of the knee. Sitting up nice and tall. And then lead forward with your chest, send your heart forward. Breathing through it. Trying not to hold your breath while we stretch. And 
one more deep breath in through the nose and let it out out through the mouth. Slowly extending that bottom leg, placing that cross foot onto the floor, reach the right arm up and hook it outside of the left leg, twisting towards the left. And very slowly counter twisting as you lean towards the side make sure that foot falls towards the outside you're going to bend that bottom leg and come back up sitting on both sitting bones and trying to bring stack the knees on top of one another and making sure that this feels comfortable if it's too much for your knees you can always come back you can even sit in double pigeon so this is only an option too Sitting up nice and tall, and then bending forward again. Slowly bringing yourself back up. Bring the arms behind, lift the knees. Uncross the legs and again moving the legs from side to side. Keep going like that for a few more. And then coming into a wide legged pose. The legs are open towards the side as much as you can. Making sure that both sitting bones are rooted down. So if you want to elevate the hips to help with um, tucking up the pelvis. So if you want more sensation of lift, you can always sit on the block or something to help to help that uh, tilting the pelvis forward. So in this position again, you don't want to tuck, you want to lift, and we actually want the pelvis to tilt, like I said, forward. So our whole spine and pelvis tilting forward with our knees and our toes kind of going the opposite direction. So as you stay here, kind of just getting comfortable, moving from side to side, and slowly starting to walk our hands in front. So to begin, we always start with the knees and toes up towards the ceiling. And then as we go forward, to prevent caving in, so rolling knees and toes in, we kind of think of this external rotation stemming from the hips, rotating outward and down. So it might not necessarily roll backwards, but kind of keep in mind that sensation that we want to turn out um, rather than turn in. So walking our hands forward, maybe placing hands on blocks or extending the arms all the way, kind of whatever works for you. Our goal here is to bring the belly down towards the floor. So like I said, kind of even elevating the hips to help with that hold instead of rounding and reaching, we want to lift and extend. So keeping the feet and knees engaged. Yeah. Might feel a big stretch here in the inner, inner thighs. Breathing through it, thinking about like what I said before, kind of as you inhale, inhale uh, nice and deeply, and then as you exhale, send your breath to those areas, kind of just allowing your body to just let go and surrender into this pose. And rather you trying to become the pose or you trying to form your body into the pose, allow the pose to come to you. So that sounds kind of weird to say, but but we're uh, literally allow that this pose to become a part of you, right? So the more we breathe and the more we relax, it's like allowing just us to surrender to the pose and the pose kind of comes to us. And very slowly walking your hands back towards you, hands underneath the knees, bring the knees together. So, so the feet onto the floor, bring the hands behind. 
Reverse tabletop, lift the hips up. Shoulders over top of the wrists. And two. And for one, lower the hips down. And nice and slow rolling down onto our backs. Hugging the knees in towards your chest. And rocking from side to side. Taking the soles of the feet onto the floor. Fingertips are able to touch the backs of the heels. And pressing into the hands and into the feet, lifting the hips up, bridge pose. Holding at the top. You can stay here and interlace the hands underneath you, coming up onto the shoulder blades, pressing the hips up even higher. And keep those hips lifted. Beautiful. Release the hands. Come down off the shoulders and lower the hips nice and slow. Hug the knees back in towards your chest. Rocking from side to side. And then grabbing the outer edges of the feet. Pulling the knees down, rocking from side to side, happy baby. Okay. You can bring the knees together and just extend the leg up towards the ceiling from point to toes or flex the feet. And then reach the arms up as well. It's called dead bug. Kind of allowing all the energy from our feet, from our hands, to drain back towards the center of the body. You can shake out the feet, shake out the legs. And if there's any final position you wish to do before Shavasana, you can do so. But if not, you can lower the legs down. You can draw the soles of the feet together. And open up the knees in butterfly or extend the legs to the corners of the mat. Your arms can rest on the body or away from the body and allowing your entire body to just surrender and let go into this final resting posture. Allowing your body to absorb today's practice. And giving yourself this time to say thank you to your body for showing up and for practicing yoga. Your body truly thanks you. Allowing everything to be soft. these next few moments for yourself. You can stay here as long as you would like. But if you're ready to come out of this posture, simply moving the fingers and toes, circling your wrists and ankles, drawing the legs together, reaching the arms up overhead, taking a big stretch, And as you exhale, draw the knees in, soles of the feet down, and rolling over onto one side. Just stay here for a moment. And then on your own time, press yourself up into a seated position. Taking the shoulders up by the ears and rolling them back and down. Rolling them up, taking them back and down. 
Thank you so much for practicing with me today. It was an absolute pleasure. Uh, it's always so nice to see all of you. Um, the light in me honors the light in each and every one of you. Namaste. I hope you have a great rest of your day. If you have absolutely any questions or anything, please let me know. Um, but again, thank you so much.